anyway, there's a certain number of classes, there's online, there's a individual coaching, there's different features I'm not gonna go all the way through. But what I would like to say about Reimagine Yourself um, more generally is that I think this is literally the best thing that I've ever created. Because uh, in my time of teaching the Feldenkrais Method, um, you know, like anyone, the more you do something, the clearer you get. And I've taken what I've learned and I have broken down these lessons, uh, these movement lessons that we're going to do together, uh, both into the features of what kind of principles of ideal movement we'll be looking at and ways to play with those and know, am I moving in the direction I want to or not? And then Feldenkrais method being a very kind of a interesting and, and different approach to movement than many other uh, I also break down what are the learning strategies that we're using in these lessons that you could, again, apply beyond the lesson itself. And I'm very interested in how these movement lessons aren't just about movement. They're really about how we feel, how we move through the world. And that's what we're going to be spending a lot of time in the discussions in that class talking about. And I will also say that um, I know that many folks here are familiar with Feldenkrais and they already know that every teacher has their own kind of presentation. But I do think that um, you'll find there's unique qualities to the way that I present this material, um, which I would ask you to consider if you just have a general inclination to doing Feldenkrais and you're here because there's a free class, which is great. Um, but think about you know, the way we do it today and what it would be like to take this approach and really dive deep over the course of five weeks. Okay, so that's kind of a general, anyway, I'm happy to answer specific questions now at the end of what we do today or by email about more about, you know, just the details of the class. In fact, I'll pause here. I'll just see, is, does anyone want to ask something? If not, I'll keep moving. Okay, so in terms of what we're going to do today, is an interesting thing that happened over the past couple days on, uh, online, on social media. Um, so one of the places I hang out is on Instagram. It's kind of fun. And, uh, you know, people put up different videos. There's all kinds of people who love movement there, um, including Feldenkrais people, including a lot of people outside the Feldenkrais world. And um, one thing that people love to do on Instagram is create these challenges. And so I just happened to see that um, a fellow in Pittsburgh by the name of Clayton, um, who actually teaches something called functional range conditioning had a challenge. And the challenge was, can you, sitting on the floor like this and side sitting, can you in one movement jump up onto your feet? So it looks like this. And I didn't, I didn't do it marvelously, but it's, it's quite something to do that. Right, and it's it's also not something anyone should try if they don't feel like maybe I could do it. I, I was in the maybe stage, and if you look on Instagram later, you'll see a video of me doing it better than I just did. <laughs> but in any case, what does it take to have that kind of power? And um, so I, I, you know, this is what people do. I, I made my own video, I jumped up onto my feet, I did it sitting with the legs over here and over there, and then um, you know, other people were working on it, so I made a little video and I said, here's, here's some ideas about how you could do that too. And um, it was not what we're gonna do today, which is a full length Feldenkrais lesson. Um, it was just sort of like some pointers, but what I promised, and um, I don't know if anyone's here because they saw these things on Instagram, I don't think these are those same folks, but some of those people uh, may be watching this recording. So what I want to say is I knew I could jump up from the floor because of the thing that I'm about to teach, the thing that we're gonna do today. And whether or not um, you're even interested in jumping from sitting up onto your feet, what I would really like to convey even more than what we're gonna do today is that Feldenkrais method, which has this reputation for being gentle and slow and subtle, is the best method that I know, and I won't 
try to make it authoritative, it's the best in the world, whatever, but this is an amazing way to prepare yourself for power, to make powerful actions. And we will actually make some pretty powerful actions in the course of what we're gonna do today, but we're gonna, we're gonna build there slowly. And what we will do, which is consistent with every kind of uh, thing that we investigate in Feldenkrais, is we're gonna do it safely. So we're gonna, we're gonna get to a certain point where maybe some, someone would say, hey, I think I could jump off the floor now. And maybe someone else would say, no, that's not a good idea for me, but they still might say, huh, I think I could imagine it now. It's not just like, before I would have said, no, that's ridiculous, that I'm just not even gonna. Now, now maybe that person says, huh, I, I think I understand how people do that. I feel something in my body that, you know, if I had more time or whatever. Any case, I don't want anyone to try to jump off the floor today if, 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 it, if it's not a good idea. And you know that, you'll feel it. But that's the context of what we're doing today. And I really think it's important uh, to get out into the world the idea that this method um, is something that can prepare you for powerful action because Moshe Feldenkrais who created the method was a black belt in judo and that's where a lot of this stuff comes from. Um, this was not someone who was just interested in gentle and slow, but what he was interested in is how does the brain work, how does the nervous system work, and he knew that there was a certain approach that would be most effective and that's where the slow uh, aspect, small aspect of Feldenkrais comes from. So that's kind of what I wanted to say about what we're about to jump into and I'm going to pause again for one moment and just see if anyone has a comment or question about that. And if not, then we'll get right into the lesson. And if you want to speak, um, just come to your screen and kind of wave at me and I can unmute you. Okay, great. Well, no problem. Uh, we're going to get right into the lesson then. And so Again, just, I won't harp on this, but last chance for a couple of you, Pamela and Josephine, if you would turn on your cameras, um, if you're willing, and you don't have to, but it would be great, then I could see you and it would help track what we're doing together. But to begin today for our exploration, what I would like to invite you to do is to come up onto your knees. Okay, so, and it'd be great, again, if you did this somewhere near the camera. Now, if you need to, you can, you can immediately, you can put something soft under your knees, okay? But what, okay, and actually just, you can sit, you can sit back onto your heels with your pelvis if you like. So what I showed at the beginning of this, this class where I did my not so perfect rendition of jumping off the floor from sitting sideways, as I say, that's pretty complicated, but what might seem less complicated is jumping from here, just jumping up to your feet. And we're not gonna do this, we're not gonna do it. But what I would like you to think about, maybe just go a couple times from sitting on your heels to sort of lifting your pelvis up so you can be as tall as you can be on your knees. Just go up and down a couple times, just to feel it. Feel, feel that basic trajectory. And now just go ahead and sit on your knees, or uh, sorry, sit on your heels. You're sitting back. But now whether or not you think it would ever be something that you would actually want to do. Just close your eyes and imagine, if it were within reach, how would you jump up onto your feet? You're not doing test movements, you're not doing anything aside from just imagining it. But of course, if you were to jump up on your feet, your knees, which are bent under you, would have to, you would, you would straighten the legs. Now, you'd probably land in a squat, 
and you probably wouldn't land upright. But just imagine the transition of your legs as they are now to the place where the soles of the feet would be on the floor. Imagine how your head would have to move upwards towards the ceiling. And maybe you would do something with your arms. How would you get that momentum? And what would you do, and this is one of the key things that we're looking at today, what would you do with that connection you currently have to the floor on the front of your legs? So now we're still not going to actually even dream of doing the movement, but we'll do something that a couple people here will recognize I had a magical movement teaching challenge last week. If you don't know what that was, then don't worry about it. But if you now make the very first millimeter of the movement, and we all know that that's safe because you're not even, there's no way you're coming off the floor, but you really like, imagine that you were gonna even actually use the power you would need to jump all the way on your feet right now. Like wind up that much, prepare for that much power, but only go a millimeter and slow it way down. So you're gonna not only use the power to jump onto your feet, but you're gonna jump into the air in slow motion. Even in the air, you would be in slow motion. Hi, Debbie, I see you just joined us. So when you're ready, just come onto the floor. We've already started. So here you are, and you're just imagining you're gonna jump onto your feet. As you begin to lift a little, as your head starts to rise up towards the ceiling, what happens to the pressure under your shins? Do you begin to take the pressure more to one side? Don't try to correct it and do what you think you're supposed to do. Just do what you do and feel what it is. Is there any small turning? Like if you think of your breastbone as you just begin this imaginary movement, does the breastbone actually want to go to the left or go to the right? And then what about your head? As you begin the movement, does your head go forward? Does your head go backwards? Does your head go left or right? And now, without thinking of doing the movement, just begin to stand up onto your knees. Actually lift the pelvis off your heels. But okay, come back. And that do just the very beginning of that movement. Just go as far as the pelvis comes off the heels, but listen again. Where does your weight go? Is it smack down the middle? Or do you begin to feel, does one shoulder come further forward than the other? And in addition to just like, where does the weight go? Do you feel that one of your legs is more active? Maybe in the inner thigh, does one leg just want to work harder than the other one. Okay. So whether you would do it today or not, just see now if you were to follow the pattern that you're feeling with a lot of power, would you, let's say you, you come up all the way up on the floor, but where, where are you going to go? Are you going to go and land straight in front of you? Would you turn a little bit? What's the full trajectory if you continued now that you've noticed all these tiny movements? Great. Okay, so from here now, please come down and lie on your back. And again, it's great if I can see you on your camera. And if you prefer to have your camera off, that's fine. Just lie on your back for a moment here. Now, you know what would be even crazier than anything we just talked about 
What about one movement from lying on your back that would take you all the way up to standing on your feet? There's break dancers who can do this kind of thing. But if you think of jumping, I, I actually did this here in DC with some people this morning and one of the fellows in the class when he was on his knees, one of his comments was when he began to think of jumping up onto his feet, his experience of sitting changed. So if you thought that you were gonna somehow, with some superpower, fly off the floor from this position, and you feel the back of your body against the floor, which parts of your body feel connected to the floor in a way that you could actually get leverage? And are there some other places that you feel like you really wouldn't want to press on that to do such a powerful action? So another way to think of this is as you feel the connection between the back of yourself and the floor, how do you experience that? Is it as if your body rests on top of the floor or even sinks into the floor? Or could you imagine another way of experiencing it where it's as if the floor had risen up under you? floor was lifting you and you might feel in different parts of yourself that in this place it feels more like you're sinking and in this place it feels more like you're rising so now bend your knees and stand your feet and let's ask this question about the soles of the feet so have your feet about shoulder width apart on the floor. And listen to the connection of the bottom of your left foot with the floor and the bottom of your right foot. Which foot has more pressure towards the outside of the foot? And which has more pressure towards the inside? Does one foot have more pressure towards the heel or towards the front of the foot? And now if you were not to change the position of your feet at all, you just kept them exactly where you put them when I asked you to stand the feet. If I then asked you to lift your pelvis in the air, would you feel like you already had the feet in the position you wanted? Or would you adjust? Some people are adjusting. So don't do it, but suppose you were going to lift your pelvis up to the ceiling right now. Put your feet in the best place to do that. And then without doing the movement, just notice, is there a difference in your overall feeling of resting on the floor? Do you feel more stable, less stable, just by making this preparation for action? Okay, and now it doesn't matter if it's tiny. But just to feel what it's like, I'm going to ask you to begin that movement as if you would like to lift up into a bridge. But you could lift your pelvis only so much as sliding a piece of paper underneath. And if there's any discomfort or pain involved with this, don't push through it. Just do a tiny movement and then put the pelvis back down. And if you just did a couple inches, then do one inch. If you just did one inch, do a half an inch. Do the very, very smallest movement you can do where you know that's me lifting the pelvis. It's clear that you're beginning to engage yourself to take the weight of the pelvis towards the ceiling, but as soon as you've done that, you stop. And then you pause and do it again. You do it many times, but you're gonna keep at this tiny level where we're not so much interested in the movement as we're interested in the pattern of the movement and begin to explore similar questions to what we did at the beginning when I asked you to imagine jumping up to your feet. So just as you begin 
to engage, to lift the pelvis. Do you feel, what do you feel under your two feet? Does the pressure go mostly to one foot? Is there more activity in one leg? As the pelvis begins to lift, do both sides of the pelvis lift simultaneously or does the left side lift first? Or maybe it's the right side. Okay, pause for a moment. <coughs> And now resume just this tiny beginning of lifting the pelvis, but pay attention to your shoulders. Notice if one shoulder is more involved in this movement. What happens in your neck at the very beginning? What happens on the left side of your neck, the right side of your neck? Does the back of the neck move towards the floor or away from the floor? All right, leave that alone, take a rest. Just feel if anything is different about how you are resting on the floor, just having done this small investigation And now again, stand your feet as if to lift the pelvis, but we're gonna do something a little different now. Bring your attention to your right foot. And now very slowly do a movement where you lift the inner edge of your right foot, a small amount away from the floor. Very small. In fact, so small that the ball of the big toe remains firmly on the floor. So of course you could just pick up the inner edge of the whole foot and you could come over onto the outer edge of the foot. You can do that once or twice just to see what that is. But what we're looking for is not that. We're looking for a movement that grows the inner arch of the right foot without needing to disturb the connection of your big toe to the floor. And just notice right away if, if, if you have an idea of how to do that or if this is kind of a confusing instruction for you at this point. And we'll definitely get more into detail, but just experience right now, what does it feel like to look for this movement? Could be that you find it, or it could be that you can't possibly imagine that the big toe stays on the floor as you lift the inner arch. So one thing you can always do is to make the movement smaller. Another thing you can always do is to pause longer between movements, to consider the feeling of the last movement, to work through the image in your mind of the next movement, there's no goal at this point aside from just to explore and play with it. Okay, but let's get a little more information. So now roll to your side and come up to sit, please. And you can put something under your pelvis if it helps you to be more comfortable sitting on the floor. That's fine but sit so that your right foot is still standing. And then your left leg, you can also do various things. You can do what's comfortable with your left leg. But your right foot is standing now. And so if you need, if you feel like it's a, so I see someone clasping their knee. We're going to actually be touching the leg right now, but if you need to, 
uh, for support. Just maybe you could raise yourself more. You could also put a hand on the floor. But what we want to do is we don't we just don't want to be sort of grabbing the leg because we're going to be doing something subtle and that would change our ability to do that and to pay attention. So now here in sitting, begin this movement again. Just a couple times, think about lifting just the inner arch without lifting the big toe. And now, if you like, you can look at me here. I'm going to do something with a skeleton here. Um, just make sure. Hopefully you can see this the skeleton. <laughs> this poor guy, his kneecap always stays with the femur. I just got this. But um, aside from that detail, which hopefully your, your patella does not do that, if you come up to the knee, let's see. OK, yeah. So this is a left leg. So I'm going to position it so the outside of the leg you can see. And uh, if you put your hand on the outside of your ankle and feel the knob there, that's the condyle of the fibula. And if you come up, right up to the outside of the knee here, this is the head of the fibula. And you can take your thumb like this, and, or you can start on top of the knee and come around to the outside, but you can take your thumb and you can put it right behind there, okay? You feel that you can put your thumb and kind of rest it on that little spot, okay? And so now as you return to doing the movement and you have your thumb on the back of the head of the fibula, can you feel how the head of the fibula could move backwards into your thumb as you do the movement? And you may or may not have figured out how to keep the big toe down, but either way, you probably feel that movement. But can you now use that movement? In other words, think of deliberately doing something in the area of your knee to take the head of the fibula backwards and listen to the sole of your foot as you do that. Does that in fact help with this project of lifting the inner arch and keeping the big toe on the floor? Okay, now another thing you can do, I think that terrible patella on my skeleton is not the best, so I'm just going to show you myself. Now can you take your hand and come around the outside and you're going to go, if you feel the knee, right, right under the kneecap is the top of the tibia. So there's this, this plateau here. You can't get all the way in here, but you can, you can feel just the edge of it. So feel around gently. And then if you put your hand on the front of your leg, right up under the kneecap, and you just gently, very gently, begin to turn it to the outside. Even think of just turning the skin, but feel how the bone can rotate. And do this and listen again to your foot against the floor. And does that begin to change the shape of your foot such that the inner arch could be lifted? And now deliberately make the movement from under your foot, but see if you can help to make the movement clearer by doing this movement with your hand of turning the bone. And you can go back to putting the thumb behind the head of the fibula and how that goes back. And you can play with doing this movement, thinking of initiating from these three different places, from under the arch, from the turning, of the tibia on the front of your leg, from the head of the fibula being drawn back. Okay. And now come back down and rest on your back and stand the feet and continue doing this movement. But now, even though you're not touching with your hands, now you have these different landmarks and you realize that what you're doing is not just some small thing underneath your foot. It's a way of organizing the leg. So can you look for that connection up to the knee? And again, with the idea that the big toe is firmly planted on the floor. Now at the same time, if you imagine 
the fourth toe, if you were to draw a line backwards from the end of your fourth toe towards your heel, first you would get the larger bone in the middle of your foot, the metatarsal, the fourth metatarsal, and you take it further back, it would actually go right through the center of your heel because the heel is not actually dead center on your foot. And can you imagine as you look for this movement that there's a movement of the fourth metatarsal and just beyond that, there's a bone called the cuboid, that there's an internal kind of spiraling movement inside the foot. So that the reason that you don't need to lift your toe is that this spiraling movement is taking place inside the foot and it moves up the leg through this rotation of the bones of the lower leg. And it even goes further than that. So every time you do this small little lift of the inner edge of your foot, also pay attention to what do you feel in the right hip joint. What do you feel as you turn on this little activation? And then what do you feel in the hip joint also when you let it go? All right, so rest with your legs long again. And just feel now having explored this movement on the right side. What's the experience of how your right leg rests on the floor? What's the experience of how your left leg lies on the floor? And do you feel any difference in your low back or higher up into your chest, connection of your shoulder blades? Roll your head a little left and right and feel what's your sense of connection all the way through yourself as the head goes one way and as the head goes the other way. Just roll it gently a little bit away from the middle in each direction. And then please stand your feet shoulder width apart again. And this time, again, working with the right side, the right foot, can you do a very small movement of lifting the outer arch of the foot? So you're gonna make a small lift under the outside of your foot, but the pinky toe, the metatarsal stays down. So you already kind of have a sense from what you did before. You're looking for kind of an internal movement. It's not a movement of taking the foot away from the floor, just this one portion. But think about when you lifted the inner edge, think about what happened through your shin, just under your knee. What did you feel in the hip? And now you're going in the other direction. So come up into sitting again and explore those same landmarks with your hands, but now thinking of lifting the outer edge. So last time when you had your hand under the knee, you turned your hand towards the outside. If you now turn your shin inwards, can you feel how something happens to create a little lift on the outside of your foot. And think of, think of the bone spiraling inside the leg. Put your thumb on the back of the fibula, the head of the fibula. Can you move the fibula away from your thumb? And then if you like, revisit the movement of the inner edge. Feel how the fibula moves into your thumb and then take it away. Okay, and then come back down onto the floor on your back. Work again on the movement of lifting the outer edge, but again, maybe with a little bit more of an idea of the image of the whole leg, how this happens. 
Think of those different places. And after you've done a few movements, then alternate lifting the inner edge and the outer edge, the ball of the foot on both sides remaining always on the floor, but playing with this internal spiral in the leg. And as you go back and forth between the inner edge and the outer edge, feel when do you feel like the leg moves into a clear connection up into the hip joint? When does it move a little as if the head of the femur was coming a little bit out of the joint? You can pause if you need to, just to kind of clear the air at any point. But do a couple more movements alternating like this, and maybe even listen up and down your spine. And then lengthen your legs and rest. And if you feel your legs and your spine, does it seem like one leg is more connected to the spine than the other? All right, so stand your feet and begin to lift the inner edge of the left foot. And over the next few minutes, you'll play in the same way that you did on the right side, first with this movement, and eventually we'll get to the other one. But now you have a clearer picture of where you're going because of what you've already done. So one new strategy also is to do a couple movements, lifting the inner edge of the left foot, and then pause and go back to the right foot where we're gonna presume it's clear just because you already practiced a bit. Feel what you feel on the right and then go back to the left and see if there's something that you feel yourself doing on the right that you haven't found on the left yet and if you can kind of identify that. And then come up into sitting. and Keep playing this way, you can still Alternate left and right to use that reference point. But just remember all the things that you did on the other side. Where were the places you touched? You might take a moment at any point to, to not even really look for the movement, but just to palpate and feel these structures that are set into motion more clearly, feeling the patella, the ridge of the tibia, maybe tracing the length of the two bones in the lower leg from bottom to top. You can do movements on the right, go back to the left. You can stay here, you can go back down onto the floor. You can think of initiating the movement from one place at a time or from both or three different places. Every place you feel is involved in the movement that you didn't notice before can be part of the movement from the moment of initiation the next time you do it. And you can stay up or you can go back onto your back but begin to incorporate playing with the movement of lifting the outer edge of the left foot as well. And you can alternate once the inner edge, once the outer edge. So in terms of strategy, just what are we doing here? We don't do it the same way on the second side because we have this opportunity to build off of the first side. Maybe it's a little faster, maybe it's a little more free form. But your brain doesn't need exact repetitions. In fact, it might work better if it gets interested in a new approach on round two. So lie on your back again. Stand your feet. And before you move, just 
Feel again the connection of your two feet to the floor. And then just one or two movements. Try lifting the pelvis again. What's the weight of the pelvis now? Is it exactly as it was? Is it heavier? Is it lighter? Okay, leave that alone. And now lift the inner edge of both feet together. But you do this in such a way, again, that the ball of the big toe stays on the floor. So it's this internal spiraling movement. Do you remember which way, if, you, if, if someone came along to help you and they put their hand just under your knee on both sides, would, would they turn the front of your shins towards each other or away from each other to lift the outer edge of both feet? Okay, and lift the inner edge of both feet. Or I'm sorry, I think it, we said the inner edge. Lift the outer edge now. And in any case, the next thing is to, to alternate. Lift the inner edge, lift the outer edge. How clear is the image of what you're doing, not only under the foot, but all the way up into the hip joint? And just notice, is it clearer on one side? You can also work with one foot and the other, a little back and forth, a little more. On the side where it's clearer, there's something there to notice that you can use on the side where it's a little less clear. Lift the inner edge of one foot and the outer edge of the other. If that person was with their hand under your knees on the front, what would they be doing to lift the inner edge of one foot and the outer edge of the other? And do this in one direction, then do it in the other direction. Go back and forth here a little bit. Does something change on the back of your pelvis when you do that? The way your pelvis contacts the floor. Okay, and now go back to lifting what's the inner edge and what's lifting the outer edge. And as you do this, when you do one of these movements, think about it first and feel what's going on. When you do one of these movements, let's suppose the pelvis would be a little lighter to lift. So form a little theory before you do it and then test your theory. So lift the pelvis and at the same time lift the edges of the foot, but you decide if it's the inner edge or the outer edge. Do the same thing on both feet. And just notice what you experience and then switch it. So whichever you started with, you're gonna try both lifting the inner edge to lift the pelvis and you're gonna try lifting the outer edge to lift the pelvis. Is your experience of the weight of the pelvis different depending on which of these spiraling movements you look for? And what happens if you try lifting the pelvis by lifting the inner edge on one side and the outer edge on the other side? Where does the pelvis go? And try this, but the different combination, the foot that was the inner edge, now it's the outer edge, etc. And then out of all these choices, lift the pelvis in the way that feels best to you right now. And as you do that, what happens to your knees? Do your knees move towards each other? Do they move away? Do they move down towards your feet? Do they move up towards your head? Could the knees remain exactly in the same place as you lift the pelvis? Is that possible? Okay, rest your legs. Just feel what's the length of your spine now. Roll your head a little side to side. Compare that to what you felt earlier, just gently. Then rest your head in the middle. OK, 
Okay, stand your right leg. And now slowly begin to roll your pelvis a little to the left. And just as you begin, stop and go back. Now, just in that very, very first moment, what happens to your knee? So for at least one person, I see the knee goes down towards the feet and the knee goes to the left. So try that. Let the knee go down and to the left as you do the movement. Okay. Now, can you try keeping the weight always on the outer edge of your foot? And as you roll the pelvis, think of lifting the inner edge of your foot and keep the knee exactly where it is. Can you roll away from the knee without displacing it? Keep the weight on the outer edge. It's a different feeling. Something different happens in the hip joint. Go back to letting the knee go to the left along with the pelvis. It's like the leg and the pelvis are the same thing. Now, think of how the top of the leg is a ball inside a bowl of the hip socket, and there's a way those surfaces could slide around each other so that you could roll the pelvis to the left, but the right knee doesn't have to follow. You might find, depending on what you're doing, that repositioning the foot further or closer to your pelvis, further or closer from the other leg, might help to think of rolling the pelvis not purely to the left, but even a little bit up, as if you were trying to connect to your left shoulder. But all you need is the tiniest beginning. What we're looking for is just that distinction where the knee doesn't have to get pulled along. Okay, but go ahead now and rest. Notice if anything's different in the low back on the right side versus the left. And then stand the left leg and play with rolling the pelvis to the right. Find out just what happens kind of naturally for you when you think of rolling the pelvis. And then look for this possibility. It's like you could balance a plate of food on top of the left knee without spilling it, but you could roll the pelvis to the right. And is there something about this spiral that you've been practicing, the one that begins under the inner edge of your foot? And by the way, the spiraling continues above the knee. Can you feel as you do this that your femur, there's a way that it turns around itself? If you like, you could put a hand on your left thigh just to sort of listen, not to direct the leg, but to just feel what is the leg doing? And even do a movement where you let the knee move with the pelvis and feel what happens. And then may, is there much rotation when you do it that way? And then go back to thinking of the, keeping the pressure on the outer edge of the left foot, rolling the pelvis to the right away from the knee, but feel with your hand what is happening in the upper leg there. And now stand both feet, maybe slightly wider apart than what you've been doing. And can you roll the pelvis left and right without changing the distance between your knees? So they don't move towards each other, they don't move away. But somehow you find an internal movement through your legs and up into the hip joint such that you can roll the pelvis away from one leg and towards the other, and then change directions and do it again. And remember, we're very happy with the smallest movement. We're just looking to clarify this possibility. You have to work in a particular way with the leg that you're rolling the pelvis away from so that it doesn't get pulled inwards. You have to work in another way with the other leg so that it doesn't get pushed outwards towards the floor. Okay, and now just try one time, lift the pelvis into the air. What does it feel like now?
And what does this have to do with the rest of your spine? So feel the, the higher you lift, the weight moves up your back. You can lift higher than before if it's comfortable. But if what you were doing right now, if you think about what you began with, standing on your knees and trying to jump to your feet. Remember I asked the question, what does your head do? Does it feel like when you begin to lift that the back of your head wants to go down and through the floor? Or is there a way you could do this movement where the top of your head would go straight towards the wall that's up above your head? In other words, the head, how could you do this so the head doesn't tilt back? The back of the neck actually flattens towards the floor as you do the movement. Is that possible? So think about, could you lift the pelvis in such a way that you, you don't take the knees down towards your feet? You actually move, you might even possibly slide on the floor a little bit. If it's not there, don't, don't push it. But have the image that if someone had their hand on the top of your head, you could be pressing into their hand with the top of your head, head as you lift the pelvis here. Feel what you do between your shoulder blades. Think about that place from the very first moment that you begin moving. Is there something you could be doing in your chest, in your upper back? Great, take a rest. And the next time you exhale, blow out all of the air that you possibly can. And then before you inhale again, just wait until the air rushes in on its own. So you're not holding your breath. You're just pausing. but You're not deliberately drawing the breath. You're just allowing the breath to come in. And you do it and, and you do it again. Each time you get to the exhale, just let the air fill you. Feel that sense of expansion that can just happen without you needing to effort in any way. And please stand your right foot on the floor. And now you're gonna do something that might we might need to make a little modification, but I'm just gonna describe it and you feel. So actually stand your left leg as well for the moment. But then what you're going to do is you're gonna allow your left knee to go outwards until it comes to the floor and you're gonna slide your left foot with the inner edge of the foot to the ceiling, you're gonna slide it into the gap between your right heel and your pelvis. So you might need to move your right foot down to make that space. And then what, if, if there's discomfort in the left leg here, what you can do is you can grab a pillow or something and you can put it under the knee. So if anyone would like to do that, go ahead and take this opportunity to grab something. But you're gonna have your left knee out to the left there and you're gonna have the outer edge of your left foot on the floor between your right foot and the pelvis. But then once you're there, you're gonna actually lift the right foot off the floor and put it down again on top of the blade of your left foot. You're gonna rest the sole of your foot on top of the inner edge of your right foot. And more or less, you wanna line it up so that your right heel is on top of your left heel on the inner edge, and the front of your foot rests somewhere around the third toe of your right foot is over the big toe of your left foot. So you feel that you're kind of on a precipice, okay? And now once you're here, and if, if you need to, you can always change, like you can come out of the position if your body doesn't like this. You can take rests by coming out of the position. But while you're here, you begin to move your right knee to the right towards the floor. And you make that happen 
by initiating the movement by lifting the inner edge of your right foot. Can you feel how lifting the inner edge, you already felt how it can create a certain kind of rotation. And you've done movements where I asked you to keep the knee over the foot, but now see how you could use it if you wanted to take the right knee to the right and it moves towards the floor. And just as far as is comfortable. And then when you're bringing the knee back up over the foot, can you do that by lifting the outer edge? So you lift the inner edge, it takes the knee towards the floor, and you lift the outer edge and it helps you to bring the leg back up into the standing position. Just pay attention that you don't tense somewhere, hold your breath. Now, once this gets familiar to you, can you continue to do the movement of taking the knee to the right just as you're doing nice and slow, but then in one movement, snap the knee back by lifting the outer edge. Just very quickly bring the knee back up. It's as if you were walking on a trail and you went over an uneven patch on the ground and you began to fall and then you righted yourself. You stumbled and then, whoop, nope, I'm not gonna fall right now. So feel how a kind of a quick, powerful movement of lifting the outer edge can bring you back up like that. Good. And now stand both feet. Just so bring the left foot back up into standing. And just pause here for a moment and just listen to the connection from the soles of your two feet up through the leg, through your spine, right up through the top of your head. And just feel on the two sides. What's your experience there? And now try the same thing on the other side. So this time the outer edge of the right foot will be on the floor, the right knee is out to the side, you stand the left foot on the inner edge of the right foot. Start with slow movements in both directions, taking the knee outside by lifting the inner edge, slowly bringing it back by lifting the outer edge, And then at a certain moment, you begin to snap the foot back. It goes, ooh, whoosh, ooh, whoosh, bring it up quick. And feel, obviously it takes more effort to be fast, to do something suddenly, but how much does it really take? What some people will do is they'll bring the foot beyond standing and they'll swing it to the other side. Can you bring it up and stop right with the knee to the ceiling? Great, lengthen your legs and rest. Just gonna take a very brief rest here. And then stand the feet and find out what's it like to lift the pelvis. And keep in mind some of the things that we were just talking about. So again, if you imagine that this is some sort of replica of jumping from, from having your shins against the floor up into standing, if your knees are going away from your head, you would just be pushing your legs down into the floor. Would that help to lift you? What if instead, as you lift the pelvis in the air, you could imagine that the pelvis actually travels towards your head? I said before, you could imagine pushing your head up into someone's hand above you. Imagine, where's your breastbone before you do the movement? Could you imagine doing the movement such that when your pelvis was fully lifted, the place where your chin is now, that's where your breastbone would be when you were fully lifted. And think of moving up, up in the sense of your body, up above your head, not just pelvis towards the ceiling. That direction is actually what we would call forward. But now we want both forward and up. 
if you were a martial artist and you wanted to use all of your power to somehow like, I don't know if there's a martial arts move like this, but if there was, could you butt someone with your head who was up? Could you, could you move away from the floor? So you notice also if you're, you're putting more weight onto your feet as you do this and find out, could you lift your pelvis without pressing your feet into the floor? And remember what we've been doing this whole time. Try lifting the inner edges of your feet and thinking of that internal spiral. Just like when you rolled the pelvis to the side and I asked you not to have the knee follow, but to move away from the knee. See if your pelvis can move up towards your head, away from your knees. You could reposition your feet, some of you, maybe a little wider. Okay, leave that alone, roll to your side and come up into sitting. And sit with the soles of your feet touching each other. You can have your hands on the floor behind you. Okay. And with the soles of your feet touching, what does it mean to lift the inner edges of both feet? Feel what happens all the way through your legs up into your hip joint. And then lift the outer edges of your feet. So that means that they move away from each other since they're, your feet are touching. And go back and forth and see which movement lifts your knees away from the floor, which movement takes your knees towards the floor. Just notice, are your fingers pointed backwards or forwards? If you have the fingers backwards, make them go forwards. If you have the fingers forwards, make them go backwards. Notice the difference in your chest, your shoulder blades. And now lift the inner edges of your feet and maybe it's tiny at first, but can you lift the inner edges and also lift you're going to use your arms to help. You're going to lift the pelvis a little off the ground as you do it. You can make it small. And which direction does your head go? So for many people, the head goes backwards. Could you lift your pelvis into the air as you lift the inner edge? And again, with the help from your arms, could you move the pelvis forward as if you were going to land and sit your pelvis on top of your heels? Feel what happens in the hip joints there. So that the soles of the feet stay together the whole time. And you're thinking of that movement of the inner edges moving away from each other. And again, does the head go backwards or forwards? For many of you, it goes backwards. So just pause for a moment, and you may or may not actually do this, but suppose there was a way to do this movement of lifting the inner edges, lifting the pelvis, and at the same time, you would take your head all the way out in front of your knees. So that, that may or may not happen, but if you just did that very, 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 very first movement, as if you were going to do that. Just feel how you change your organization. Uh, people are shaking their heads. It's, 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 it's an idea. Just an idea. OK. Lie on your back. Stand your feet. And experiment again with lifting the pelvis. After that. I think much more significant sensation in the hip joints. Do you have a different sense now as you lift the pelvis and think of not taking the knees down away from your head? Rather, think of taking the head up away from the knees. Think of that place between the shoulder blades. If you like, you could put your arms out, palms to the floor, but as you begin to lift, turn your arms over so the palms face the ceiling and think about squeezing the shoulder blades under you as you go up. And just see, are you lifting higher? Is the pelvis lighter than it was before? 
And now if it feels safe, if it feels comfortable, could you lift the pelvis as high as you're lifting it, but kind of like you did before where you snapped the knee back into position, can you just, boom, lift the pelvis in one movement quickly, but don't let the knees go down away from the head. So if you do, okay, so, so deliberately take the knees down away from the head. Deliberately do that. But feel what happens to the head on top of your spine. Do you feel how it gets pulled down? So again, what if you wanted to shoot upwards with the top of your head away? If, if you had a blanket on a wood floor, you could cheat and you could just slide. But if you've got a nice, like a fleece sweater on or anything like that, actually allow yourself to travel on the floor a little bit as you lift the pelvis. A another thing, by the way, I sh really should have said this sooner, you might try taking your socks off. That might change quite a lot. Or you can keep them on, that's fine too. But can you see, as we're now doing this large movement, how important it is, how you're using that real estate on the bottom of the soles of your feet. Would you wanna do a quick, powerful movement like this while you were lifting the outer edges? It's a question, it's not a suggestion to do it. And that push from the top of your legs up into the pelvis, up into the hip joints, up through the spine. Where do you sense that push? Do you sense that it's on the front side or on the back? So just, even without getting super specific, just look for that push in the area of your hip joints, in the area of your groin. Does it feel like it's on the front of you? Or is it like someone's reaching up under you and they put a couple fists under your sit bones and they're pushing you up towards the wall above your head? These are all questions of how you imagine the movement, but the way you imagine it indeed is what sets your course. Okay, take a rest, take a rest. What's your overall sense of aliveness in this moment? You're lying on the floor, but if you had to get up quickly, do you feel like that's a possibility also? And please roll to your side and come all the way up to standing on your knees as we did at the beginning. And think about where are the inner edges of your feet now? And begin to think of lifting the inner edges of your feet. There's no floor to relate to, but the movement is still possible. And remember that it's a movement, not just on the bottom of your foot, but on all those places that we've been looking at, including all those places above the waist that you were using. So is there some way that you could think of taking the top of your head just like a millimeter closer to the ceiling? Okay, now slowly just begin to sit back on your heels and then stop and come back up. But in the second that you begin to sit down, what happens to the pressure on the front of your shins, on the front of your knees? Do you take the pressure to the inside or to the outside? So try both. You wanna sit on your heels or just begin, but imagine that you're gonna do it so that you take the weight to the inside of your knees a couple of times. Feel not just your knees, feel how that feels throughout your whole body. And then try it as if you are going to take the weight to the outside of your knees. 
If you like, you could do a movement of taking the heels towards each other or taking the heels away from each other as you sit back. And if you were sitting back because your very next movement was that you were going to pop all the way up onto your feet, which of these movements feels like you're loading the springs to jump? Would you load the springs to jump by bringing the pressure to the inside of your knees, or would you load the springs to jump by taking the pressure to the outside of your knees? And so you don't have to jump, but can you now sit back onto your heels and then in one movement just come back to where you just were? Don't, don't worry about coming off the floor. But take your head straight up to the ceiling. Or just notice, do you actually, does your head tilt back? Does your chin move away from your chest? How could you do this movement so your spine remains long the whole time? The top of your head just goes straight towards the ceiling in the clearest line you can find. Yeah, someone put some padding under the knees. That's, that's a great idea. Anything you need to take care of yourself like that. Okay, here's something that probably everyone can relate to actually doing in daily life. If you were gonna get up off the floor here, probably your next move would be to stand one foot, right? So, but if you go from having both knees on the floor to standing one foot, what do you do with the leg that remains behind? Do you, do you take the pressure to the inner edge of that knee or the outer edge? And can you feel how you don't, you don't want that leg behind? That leg has to get very active, doesn't it, to lift you up? So try come, coming up to kneeling on one leg a number of times. Play with it in different ways based on what we've done, and then try it on the other side. If you like, you can pop up, like boom, up onto that one foot. Just do what, what feels comfortable for you. Maybe it's clearer on one side, right? Why is it clearer on that side? What's missing on the other side? You can ask yourself those questions. And I'll just say this, whether, whether or not you do it now, like this is a moment where you, you could think about, could I jump up onto my feet? Some people will just see a recording of this, so you gotta really only do it if, if you feel like it's safe. There is an area of maybe, a, I don't know if I could do it or not, but there's a clear sense that you probably have of that's not a good idea. If you have that sense, just, just don't do it right now. But if you like, you need to think of this, this spiral as if it goes from under your legs up through the hip joints, and it just shoots all along the spine up through the top of your head. All in one movement. It's like pow. And then there's some people out there who would take this one step further and they would be sitting with their knees on one side and the legs on the other. And I'm not going to try and instruct that, but it's the same principle. It's how are you specifically using your support underneath you? And how are you aiming up through the skeleton? Can you aim through the middle of every joint or do you begin to shear and move off to the side and cut across your skeleton? Okay, so however you do it, come up onto your feet. And just sense your overall sense of stature, you might say now. What's your connection to the ground? How tall do you feel? And just to see here in gravity what this means, try lifting the inner edge of one foot and then try lifting the outer edge. You can listen to your breathing. Try breathing into your low back and then just let one of your arches collapse inwards a little and notice what does that do to the breath. 
And it's useful to even practice the things that you may feel at a certain point you want to leave behind, but know how you do the things that don't feel the best so that you can easily catch yourself next time you're doing that. And then if you found a new pattern that you like better, then how can you move into that? Okay, and now walk around the room a little bit. And just one last thing, as you walk around the room, can you imagine that you actually don't put any weight into the floor each time you step, but the second that the foot contacts the floor, you are lifting your head up and away from that foot. So you, every step is an extension of the top of your head up towards the ceiling. There's not a sense of sink and then lift, but it's just lift, lift, lift on each step. Okay, there you go. 